Hello, it is September 12, 2011, post 9-11, or the day afterwards, and I want to share with y'all to watch something on MSNBC, and a discussion that a lot of people are saying, that I know, who talked about, since Obama's black, he should be very angry and display an angriness toward the GOP to get things done. Should he? Should he? Actually do that? Play that card? Well, let's listen to someone on MSNBC who actually talked about that issue. Well, it's Monday, which means it's Kelly Goff's turn to rant, and here she is. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Dylan. Everybody's a critic when you're president. Some people don't like your politics, others don't like your policies, some people don't like your personality, then there are plenty who don't like any of the above. But few presidents have faced as much criticism as the current one has for one personality trait in particular, not being angry enough. President Obama received so much criticism for failing to appear angry enough early enough following the Gulf Coast oil spill that an entire column was devoted to how many Washington pundits were angry with him for not being sufficiently angry. Bill Maher even joked that he had hoped the president would act more black, which apparently from his vantage point involves flashing a gun during disagreements. I've never tried it, but perhaps Bill's black friends and I are, well, different. But of course, when you're president, it's often a case of damned if you do, damned if you don't. When he said that he was looking for whose ass to kick during an interview about the disaster, some accused President Obama of unpresidential-like behavior. Now with the jobs crisis escalating, so are the calls for the president to show more anger. But what many of his critics fail to understand is there are limitations to how far anger will actually take you, particularly when you are black. The stereotype of the angry, dangerous black person is so embedded in popular culture, from the earliest days of Hollywood to present-day reality TV, that it's a stereotype those of us in the public eye find ourselves constantly fighting. Case in point, days ago the Drudge Report sparked an outcry when it published a photo of First Lady Michelle Obama playing tennis. Let's just say it's clear that the goal was not to make you think she's enthusiastic about the U.S. Open. Right around the time this photo appeared, I happened to conduct an interview with Jeannie Matusami Ash, widow of tennis legend Arthur Ashe, the first African-American man and American period to win the U.S. Open. She mentioned that she has long seen similarities between President Obama and her late husband. One of the main similarities, their temperaments. Mrs. Ashe noted that her husband was constantly criticized for not being a militant enough during the Civil Rights Movement and dawn of the Black Power era, but she said he let his racket speak for him. Because of that, she pointed out that when he went on to open doors for players like the Williams sisters and to become one of the most iconic names in sports history, the main stadium of the U.S. Open is named in his honor. To Mrs. Ash's point, anger certainly has its place. But as Serena Williams learned the hard way at the 2009 U.S. Open, and again this year, it's very rarely well received on the court, particularly if you were black. President Obama clearly knows that. So in the court, or rather arena, of politics, he appears to be following Arthur Ashe's example. It remains to be seen if it will pay off in the long run. But let's at least give him the space to let his racket, or rather his policy and his pen, do the talking in the meantime. Uh, I totally agree with what you're saying, and I think, I think that the debate about whether Obama should be angry or should not be angry or what, misses the point. For, quite honestly, for me, the debate as to whether Obama is is a black man or not a black man misses the point. The job is to be the president of the United States of America. The United States of America has no capital requirements in its banking system. It has rigged trading agreements with the entire world. It has uh, a tax code that is for sale through special interests in the Congress. And I think the expectation is whoever is the president, we would like for you to address the dysfunctional systems of America and money in politics. Do you, am I, do you think I'm missing that? That the base frustration, people are aware that the military spends a bunch of money and is not giving us what we need. The healthcare spends a bunch of money, not giving us what we need. All those lists, I don't think we can get lost in anger or whether he's black, but in the process of getting lost in that, we fail to recognize that America is not taking care of itself. In a, I agree with you, Dylan, and I, I think, though, that you're paying attention to policy, and a lot of people are harping on the politics, and that's why they worry about whether or not he's angry, and, and, and I, I wish it didn't matter. Because no, it clearly matters. matters. I'm not suggesting you know, it doesn't matter. In fact, I think it consumes vastly more oxygen than what right. I'm talking about. 
and more oxygen than it should. But my, my only point is he has to is that he has to care, even though in a, in the in a, the in a real world, he, in the fair world, he shouldn't have to. He should be. But he has to be aware of that because it's a real and it's a real thing. Absolutely. Understood. Uh, wonderful to see you. Thanks for the thoughts. Uh, that'll do it for us. I'm